Welcome back again to another Lord Duckman production. Yep, I finally selected a body to go on my 1967 Volkswagen bus frame. And we're gonna turn it into a truck, just like this. That's what we're gonna do. Starting with this Volkswagen thing body on this bus chassis. Everybody said you gotta have a thing. We finally got one. There it is, guys. Oh, I already hit my knee on something. Ugh. Snug. Woo! Can that seat go back at all? Oh, we got a little bit out of it. Okay. Uh. Or not. But today I'm here once again to fix something that nobody else wanted to touch. Yep, this is a job for the MFDM himself. And it's a pretty serious problem. Not only does the parking brake not work correctly due to being damaged and then butchered, but the damage is so severe that it threatens the integrity of the entire chassis if left unrepaired. Yeah, the stress cracks under the e-brake mounting flange go down into the tunnel a couple inches and will likely worsen over time if not repaired. Not good. So today I've been tasked with replacing the flange from a donor beetle chassis. But where am I going to find a part like that without cutting up yet another chassis? I've not seen this part reproduced anywhere. Well, it's a good thing that I have one that's already cut up as a donor because this tunnel portion is the same midsection that was removed from the ATVW chassis that I shortened about a year ago. That's right, I throw nothing away. And it's a good thing for that too. This turned out to be quite a bit different than I expected, but I had a few successes along the way. Was it experience or was it just luck? I don't know, but you'll see in this video. So thanks for watching, licky likey, comment and subscribe, and don't forget to pluck the dingle belly so you get update every time I upload a video. And we'll see you right after that intro. You guys probably remember this e-brake handle. Look at this thing. Nothing wrong with the handle itself that I could tell, but down below here, look at that custom DeWalt Sawzall Blade e-brake retainer clip. Super custom. JB Weld and everything on there, and a screw hole in. <laughs> Needless to say, that's gotta come out. After further investigation with Wild Bill and I, we discovered that the chassis is, whoa, that zoom is not supposed to be doing what it's doing. Look it is here. I'll back this right up. That the chassis is starting to crack right down through here, here, here on this side, and also right over there. And when you look at this thing, you can see it's bulged up in the middle. Now, I don't know what the hell happened to this thing. I mean, even this isn't even seated where it's supposed to be. This is supposed to be flat, but it looks like somebody tried to pry it up with a two by four or somebody just yanked on it somehow. It just maybe the e-brake wasn't working and they had an emergency stop. I have no idea what they did here. <laughs> they have totally destroyed the top of the tunnel right here. These, by the way, are the heater ducts. For those of you that uh, think that things have heater channels, they don't. They actually have ductwork that runs along the inside of the tunnels. These are just rockers. Nothing goes through the inside of these here. But anyway, that's very important for the structure of this vehicle. It is the centermost rigid portion of the chassis. So this does need to be fixed correctly. And that's what we're gonna do today. I've got a donor piece to cut out and graft in here and get this thing put back together. It shouldn't be too awfully hard, but it is a process. As with cutting and welding with anything else, you just gotta dive in and just do it. The seat's gotta come out of there. And I have a fiberglass blanket, which I'll lay around the inside of the chassis here to try to stop sparks and things from hitting the interior and everything else. And there's a giant cock and balls. All right, right here we have my donor portion. Now this is the tunnel that I cut out of the ATVW. This actually shows you just how much I removed. This is the donor part that we're gonna be cutting out of here. And as Wild Bill said while we're off camera, never throw anything away. And as you guys know, I keep a lot of stuff and stuff just like this for this reason. Yeah, that's exactly why I keep this. So anyway, this is serviceable and we'll be able to put the chassis back together by simply cutting this section out and grafting it back in. Now, I don't know what I'm gonna cut through when I cut through this thing. I don't know if I'm gonna accidentally hit one of the tubes on the inside. I don't know if these things are welded to the top. I just don't know. So it's gonna be a little exploratory surgery on this first before we cut into the actual car because if I mess something up on this, then I know where I need to make adjustments. Well, anyway, that's where we're at. Let's start cutting some things apart and start welding some things back together. Burp. Okay. Here is my fiberglass blanket. This will stop rooster tails and things from hitting the side of the vehicle. This way the owner knows when he's watching the video that he knows that 
I have respect for his property, and I'm taking care of things so he doesn't get mad if something should hit it. Not that I'm going to send the rooster tail in this direction while I'm cutting anyway, but you guys get the trip. But here it is. Okay. How about that? All right, we're looking down inside of this donor tunnel section here. And this is what we're cutting out, and I'm looking at this where this ends. And down inside of there, you can see the clip where all the tubes and things are welded into. And it looks like it's right at about at this spot here. So I'm going to cut a notch in and see about where we end up. But uh, try to focus on that there. Yeah, we're going to try to cut a... Um, a notch in this way and see where the bl blade winds up on which side of that because I may have to um, I may have to do something here like out of the ordinary like cut this into sections and if that's the case and it's more work and I bid way too little <laughs> but uh, anyway yeah we're cutting into that so and hopefully as well Bill said off camera the thing chassis hopefully is it, 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 that's all huh? Hopefully the thing clip retainer that's inside of there is in the same spot or maybe further back. Don't know. We just don't know. I do have a bore, bore scope. I could shove it in there, but the problem is with bore scope, you can't perceive depth because it's just one camera. Anyway, yeah, we're kind of winging it here. The little bullet that holds this e-brake handle on here is so rusted that I'll never get the clip off of it. So we're gonna just grind it down a bit and knock it through. in that bad of shape. Look what we got over here. We got Wild Bill doing his best work on his back, like always. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Flat on my back. Flat on your back. Yeah. With your legs in the air, right? Well, sort of. His. Sort of. <laughs> but I'm not wearing red. Not wearing red? Don't make my living in bed. No. I'm putting on... A caterpillar. Yep. Part of it. It's, it's, <laughs> it's going right on the exhaust it's tip, a, right on the end there. That's the condom. There it is. There it is. That's oh. how it goes. No, this is... Uh, <laughs> it's one of them floppy tips. It goes from the heater box up to the... Uh, I guess you would call it the heater channel. Because that's where the... Yeah, you know, duct the work. Channel. Yeah, the duct, duct work. Because these don't have heater channels. Uh, true. Guess, yep. Pretty... And we're going to mention that in this video too, as a matter of fact. Because mm, cool. what I'm doing is actually direct reference to the structure of this vehicle yeah. from those cracks that we found on there. So, yeah. Well, kind of, uh, I was going to wait until you finished with the E brake job. Uh huh. And then I was going to do what I'm doing right now putting, putting the back bumper on. Yeah, it don't matter. You'll be fine, except you're dealing with a little noise. But... Yeah. You'll right. be away from the dirt and everything too. I'll be I'll be at your rear. Oh or, no. Oh at your rear. Or. Don't trust Wild Bill when he's anywhere near the rear. Never bend over in front of a sailor. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, right back to the work. That might be worth keeping. All right, we already know that there is nothing that passes through here. I probably don't need to cut down that low, but I'm gonna cut down that low anyway. Better to have a 
slightly larger donor piece than a smaller one, if you know what I mean. This tape sucks. It's like dollar store tape. <laughs> oh my god, look at this. All we need is a straight edge of it anyway. I guess we'll cut like that. Right through here. And as you guys have noticed in these videos that I've been recording, as of late, I'd rather use tape than drawing lines. Because tape will self-center, self self-straighten. Self it uh it's a nice feature of which it was never intended for. Alright. Here we go. That's where we're cutting. Oh, you're discovering something here. Uh oh, I might have to make a bigger hole than this. Uh oh. Uh oh. It looks like. No, like there's another plate on the inside of it. Yeah. The hole might be too small to pull the plate out. We're about to find out. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yes, there's definitely a plate under there, but what we're going to do is we're going to cut. Boy, I cut exactly in the right distance to just miss it up here, though. <laughs> I just guessed that. And in the back here and down the sides. Yeah, I see what I did. Gotta cut deeper on the side. There's that plate inside of there. Holy shit. And I magically cut it just beyond it, just oh, guessing. Oh man. And the plate on the side there, it goes in just a little further down than that. So when I cut the hole a little, it'll be alright. I'll just weld through both plates. Yeah, I'm not gonna touch it, but that, that, yeah. Yeah, there's really another plate right close. there. Yeah, so when I weld it together, I'll just make sure we penetrate extra deep and we'll go through both both pieces. But there's our piece. And that's the cable cable runs. Yep, and I didn't cut them or nick them, so we're good. Yeah. Yeah, they're good, so I know exactly where I need to cut. And if you do for, hit, accidentally hit it, at least you got another one there. <coughs> yeah. And those tubes will hold themselves in place. The only reason why they're loose is because there's nothing back here. It's the only one to run the weld through it. It should put all that back together. Is there together. a pop rivet or something holding it on right? No, no rivets. It's oh, welds. Oh, I just spot welds. It. Yeah, yeah that, that is actually part of this plate. Okay. I don't want to disrupt those tubes and cables and things. Because those are hard to weld to. It'd be different if I had this in individual elements, because then I could install them one at a time. But this is all, you know, already welded and fused together. So. Yeah, I can make that work. Okay. I'll do a little de-rusting on it. Get it nice and clean. Looks mm -hmm. like the dick is already bent, so yep. we'll hammer that down if need be. In fact, I better check it on another car just to see if it's even supposed to be down. <laughs> There's not any detailed pictures of any of that stuff in any of them. Any yeah, not really, no, because that's you, not you something they... You get it from they... the side and, you know, from the top of the shit already in there. Because so you... there's nothing to repair here. Yeah, no, yeah, I know. This, this is an odd problem, a really odd problem. You can see somebody damaged it by yanking on it too damn hard. It's probably what happened to that one, but they actually messed the whole damn chassis up. I mean, it cracked down the sides, as you know, and then the whole center of it buckled mm -hmm. up. I mean, it might be able to just hammer it down and weld it in, but <coughs> it'll fatigue in time. <laughs> All right, well, we got a piece. Now we can do something with it. Oh, boy. I didn't realize there was so much metal in there. Heavy metal? Whoa! <coughs> I guess they were anticipating 
some rather large arm guys pulling up on the handbrakes. Yeah, that's it, buddy. Yeah. You can see the way I pull levers. I pull levers better than anybody. <laughs> yeah, and removes the seatbelt. Yeah! And it's out. Nine seatbelt. Nine. <laughs> A little more disassembly here. Just gonna take these off. It's easier to get the cables out when the levers are off, you see? Everything's exposed that way. Alright, get that out. Alright, here's our donor piece. Everything seems to line up, actually, that's good. So I'm gonna approximate where we have to draw our lines to start cutting. Looks like we're gonna cut right on the edge of this little cut that's in the chassis here. This is all dented in. My God, somebody hammered this. This isn't even right. Yeah, I guess the best answer was just to remove this. I mean, not only is it just bashed, but it's all fatigued and it's cracking everywhere. All right, well, that's how it's gonna go in there. There is double layers of metal, which we talked about, so we're gonna just weld the crap out of it and get some deep penetration on it. Should be fine. And the inside plate is only tack welded in a few spots anyway. I think it's just designed to stop the whole thing from pulling out through the chassis. All right, well, here it is. That's where we're gonna be. Yeah, getting ready to start cutting in here. I don't want my new camera in here because this little space is gonna be so incredibly dusty. And I don't have a lens protector on this thing, so I don't want this lens getting screwed up. So, we're just gonna leave the camera on the outside. In fact, if I do anything, maybe I'll shoot through the windshield. Yeah, maybe something like that. But the tripod, no, I can't set the tripod up over here. Sorry, guys. You're just gonna have to imagine me cutting it. Here, look. Here, use your imaginations. Look, 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 look. Look, 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 look. There you go. <laughs> I'm not even done cutting yet. I only cut through here and here, and this whole thing is already falling out. I mean, it's, it's, it's out. <laughs> I gotta finish cutting around the, the back of this here and up around the other side, and it, it, it'll be removed, but yeah, it's, uh... <laughs> It's falling out, it's not even cut out yet. It's ridiculous. <laughs> the JB Weld yeah. It's actually where the JB Weld ended it happened to be where I need to put my line, so it turned out pretty good actually. If I can leave the inner plate in, I will. But it looks like that might be cracked too. So I'm just gonna cut through what I have to cut. Anyway. Alright, the inside it. here, I haven't even finished cutting this thing yet. We've already run into some serious problems. Look at this. This thing is so cracked and so fatigued that it actually fell out. I only had to get one cut along this side, that whole piece came out. Along the bottom side here, another piece fell out of it, and then this whole thing is just, it's all floppy loose. So this thing was getting ready to come loose anyway. So it's really not gonna take that many more cuts to get it out. And once, of course, I've got that out of the way, then we'll drop the new piece in and uh, get it adjusted, fitted, and start welding it in. But yeah, it's uh, pretty easy to remove it. As long as I don't whack any of the cables by accident, I think we're gonna be okay. All right, well, here we are, fun stuff. Yeah. All right, as I continued cutting, just more stuff just fell out. This is actually coming apart easier than I anticipated, just on account of it just collapsing. Things are broken, things are just even cut. Looks like somebody's been in here already and did some repairs at one point. All this crap in here is actually cut. I don't believe it, both cut on some weird angles there. Weird angle Yankovic. And there it is. Um, I guess I'll just keep cutting out the rest of this, this crap that's in here because this is not in good shape anymore. And then get the new piece scabbed in. And we'll call it a day after that, because after that it's just a matter of fitting some metal. Shouldn't be too hard. I didn't mess up any of the cables. Everything's still good. I think we're all right. All right. Ah. The fan's doing a good job of blowing all the dust out of here so I don't have to breathe any of it. Yeah, sure, I could wear a mask, but when you're not smelling it at all and I'm not sneezing, I'd say that I'm not breathing in any of it. So it's doing a good job. All right, well, here we go. Morning. All right, here's the piece. Pretty good fit on the first try, I gotta say so myself. Uh, it needs to be beaten a little bit because this beetle part is actually just a hair bigger than the thing chassis for whatever reason. And in the center here where it's dented, I need to pull that dent out so that way this will plane off. It planes off in the back okay though. Biggest problem we have is a little bit of a gap there. Not bad considering I really didn't measure it, I just kind of eyeballed it. And I made the hole smaller so that way I can always tweak it if I had to and it turned out it was damn near exactly the same size, so <laughs> I guess I lucked out a little bit. All right, well, we're gonna tweak that. I think the best way to do that is just gonna be with a 
set of dad's extra large channel locks right here because I can't get in there with a hammer to beat it out. So we're just going to try to bend it up. And I'm doing it left handedly. This metal is probably not going to be all that strong because it's not held in by anything else. Well, I'll need a little bit more. It's still got a bit of a dent, but oh, there we go. That's not too bad, actually. Get the rest of that dent out of there, and that should plane off just fine. And we'll start welding on this thing in just a minute. All right. Meanwhile, I'll get the thing in a wire wheel and clean some more of that rust off of it. And I have to clean the paint off around the surrounding edges. But we're getting somewhere. Yes. Five minutes later. Okay, here is our e-brake handle. This has got the pawl and everything installed in it in the bottom here. So this is all currently functional as is. This is what came out of the car. This is what was this whole piece that exploded when it came out. I mean, it, I didn't cut it like this, no. I mean, I cut around the edges and it just started to fall into pieces. So this was all busted up. And I thought about just like straightening it out and you know, welding in the corners and things. This is more of a mess. It would have just broken again because so much of it was messed up. And there's all brazing through here and there's brazing around the tunnel, around the outside of this perimeter. So somebody was doing something inside of here. I don't know what exactly. I, I couldn't tell you. I have no idea. I don't know the history of this vehicle. But all these e-brake handles are not constructed the same. And we discovered that when we were working on Eleanor that the little curved at bottom on here was deeper on one of the handles than I had on another. And, and it didn't fit right when I tried to put it in the chassis. Well, here we're running in a similar situation where if I put this in here, to make sure I got this thing in a position that I can. There we go put our pin back in and when you look inside of there look where the catch is it barely lines up with that and if you pull on this handle hard enough you're gonna rip it right back out way back to square one so these handles are like I said not all created equally there actually are differences contrary to popular belief it's not just an early and a late handle uh, e-brake handle there actually are a lot of differences along the way well I have a, a gear from another handle if I put this in here, oh, helps if I don't turn it inside out like I just did. It, you screwed that one up, Dark Man. Just like that. And then we'll put this down in here. And then we put the pin back in. All right. Now look at how that lines up perfectly. This handle is functional. I wouldn't worry about this thing getting ripped out of there or having any damage or any problems down the road. So this sucker just needs to be de-rusted and reinstalled. Once I get the sucker welded in, we'll be able to reinstall the brake cables and everything should be fine on it. And I'll even get it painted for, for the guy. I think he'll like it in the end. So there it is. Let's get this thing back apart and throw it in the wire wheel and get him cleaned up. Let go, you! Oh no! Boy, it works so good it don't want to come apart now. That's what I want to see. All right, you guys, I got this thing cleaned right. up about the best as I could with a wire wheel. I'm gonna have to let the acid get the rest because there's some places I just couldn't get in there. But it turned out the rust on this thing is not very thick at all. I mean, geez, about a minute on the wire wheel cleaned it up as good as it is. So, we gotta put this in here. And what I discovered is the best way because somebody welded this holder on here. And this is just, it's wrong. It works, but it's wrong. Put that through. There we go. And while we're at it, put all the other cables in the proper positions. Well, you know, I don't want them in the proper positions because they might be too close to where I'm welding. I don't want to weld my cables in. Yeah, I think we're good just like that. All right, here it is. Let's start getting them tacked in then.
Well, there we are. Look at that, guys. Welded in there. Yeah, the welds are a little ugly, as I said before. I'm going to study the art of dime stacking at a later date, but what matters is that I got good penetration and I went through both layers. I mean, I hit this thing, welded on, I welded on it multiple times, and I'm surprised it didn't burn through with how hard I hit it. But anyway, I'm going to hit it with the grinder because Volkswagen things don't have carpet. If it had carpet, I'd just cover it and not think about it, but yeah, we're going to grind it down, clean it up at least a little bit, and then we're going to acid coat it for tonight, and then tomorrow morning when the acid is nice and dry, we're going to paint it up. All right, well, that's where we're at. All right, you guys, check it out. Got in there with the grinder. Nice and smooth the whole way around. Gonna rub it with a little bit of primer on there. Rub it with a little bit of primer. Who rubs on primer? Apparently the duck man does. <laughs> so I'll, I'll put a little bit of primer on there after we uh, cat piss it for the night. So we'll get a coating on there, we'll let it dry overnight, and then at that point I'll shoot a little primer on there, get a light sanding on it, and then we'll just blacken everything back out the way it was. Also gotta do a little shop backing in here. There is a lot of dust and debris inside of this car. And I'm sorry about that, but I mean, it's just the way it, it goes. I did have everything covered in the back here, so all the seats and things didn't get hit by hot shrapnel, so whatever it's worth. But all the good, heavy, dirty, disgusting, hot, you know, smoky stuff is done. It's all done. And we're ready to start hooking up his cables and everything, so we'll take care of all that tomorrow after our coat of paint. Otherwise, it's ready to rock and roll for the evening. What do you think, Bill? I think it looks 100% better than the, <laughs> than the uh, piece of crap that was in there. Other than the grinding marks, it looks new. Yeah, yeah it does. And when you uh, did a pre-assemble on it a while ago and was ratcheting the handle, it was smooth as silk. Yeah, it's, yeah, it it's going to work. To be. It's going to work just fine. Yeah. So I think we're going to be good in there. All right, I got to get that bottle of cat piss and a brush. And we'll start putting that in there yeah, and getting this thing squared away. Uh, that was definitely a good good use of recycling material. Yeah, see? So you guys don't throw anything away. Yeah, don't away. throw anything away. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> I mean, it's not like I don't have the space to keep it, you know, an extra tunnel in the corner of my property. Yeah. Which still has some good sheet metal on it, by the way. I'm not throwing it away just because metal is metal. And you know me, I'm always using something like that. And sure, I could go and buy metal, just like you see sitting there on the side of the house. That is the tunnel. I'd probably spend $200 on steel like that yeah or use what I got <laughs> and I'm always doing this stuff now if you're not a hobbyist maybe you want to fling it but in my case I I'm always working I, I yeah I can't get rid of that stuff yeah I hear it all the time every one of my videos clean up your yard get rid of all that junk well, then I wouldn't have videos to make <laughs> it's not junk <laughs> yeah it's snot it's, junk that's right it's snot junk. <laughs> all right let's get the cat right. piss out we got our lovely bottle of cat piss for those of you that are interested in this stuff, it is phosphoric acid. Now our link's down below in the video description. You can get some for yourself. No, no, whoa. <laughs> not only does it remove rust, but it also helps to treat bare metal so it doesn't rust. What it does is it takes any of the oxides out of rust, or iron oxide as it is, and it turns it into iron phosphate. Iron phosphate does not rust, unless something scratches through it and then exposes bare metal underneath. But otherwise, once we get this thing coated, and then we put a coat of paint on it, essentially, it won't ever rust again, unless it's compromised, physically damaged somehow. But this is going to do a good number on this, and tomorrow morning, this whole area will either turn gray or white. Sometimes it'll turn white powdery, and people will say, well, that totally ruins the surface for paint. Well, it does, but you're supposed to brush it off. You can use some water, a soapy rag, and just wipe it. And oh, I should say, not soapy. Don't use a soapy rag, use a wet rag. <laughs> soapy rag will leave a residue of soap behind. You want to use a wet rag and just wipe the stuff off. And you might think, you know, putting water on it is counterproductive, but it's already coated, so it can get wet all at once. It won't matter. From your angle there, does it seem like I missed any spot? No, nah, it looks good. It looks, looks good. good. But you can see the foaming action going on yeah, it's, it's, when it's neutralizing that rust. Yeah, or the bare metal. It's actually. Yeah producing that iron phosphate, and uh, the byproduct, believe it or not, is water. Damn. It's water and it will just evaporate. And sometimes they put a very, very light alcohol um, Drying in the mixture, right. Yeah. So that way as it dries, it'll help the water to evaporate. It smells like cat piss. <laughs> Actually, it really doesn't. <laughs> it does smell like, you know, acidic acid. I mean, not like yeah. vinegar or something, but it does have a acrid smell to it and it's not it doesn't hurt your hands and you know no it doesn't i mean look yeah you should wear gloves yeah no i'm not dying <laughs> you know this stuff is actually um 
it's safe to drink because it happens to be one of the ingredients in Coca-Cola. <laughs> and you might say, well, Coca-Cola is not good for you. Well, it's not because of the phosphoric acid. <laughs> it's just because of all that sugar and caffeine. But <laughs> Yeah, because I've seen people soak parts in Coca-Cola and they come out clean. Because of the phosphoric yeah. acid. <laughs> Especially brass. It really, really cleans up. It's also got fizzy water in it, which is uh, carbonic yeah. acid. So that will right. help too for whatever it's worth. But anyway, we'll let that sit overnight. There it is. <sighs> Yeah, acid. Oh, I'm dying. Actually, I cleaned my hand. <laughs> Look, the acid cleaned my hand. It's too much light. <laughs> There's a clean spot from the acid. Oh, look, I'm dying, guys. It's burning a hole in my hand. <laughs> the following day. All right, well, we're back this morning, and the county came around and mowed all the, the, uh, the strip of grass next to the sidewalk in the street there. And because nothing's grown, everything's been dry and hasn't hardly rained in the last several weeks, it just created a huge dust storm. And it's a little breezy out here right now, but I mean, look at how filthy it made this car. It's just, come on guys, really? It, it, they didn't even cut anything. There's no lawn to cut. They just threw dirt everywhere. Look at this. The car is just filthy. Anyway, oh boy. I'm just gonna do my thing over here. I got my compressor out. I wanna blow out all the uh, iron filings from everything because yeah, it got into everything inside this car. Ah, all the hot sparks though were deflected by my fiberglass blanket so we didn't actually burn up any paint or anything like that. So the car just needs a good clean out. You can see it on the floor in there. It's just, it's yeah, it's yucky. So I'll blow everything off that's up high and then I'll vacuum out the rest with the shop vac. That should get it cleaned up. All right, meanwhile, let's close this off. I want to blow off the outside of this thing first because there's also iron filings on the outside. Man, that stuff got everywhere yesterday. Hey, there it is. All right, just got done blowing out and shop vacuuming the interior. And here's my work from last night. Look at that. See all the rust vanished? That acid band. Just like magic, links down below in the video description. Get yourself some today. I guess it's time to start reassembling this thing now. Well, no, no, not reassemble. I'm gonna put some paint on it first. First, I gotta hit it with a wet rag and clean up the acid that didn't react with anything because yeah, I got a little bit on the paint over here and still a little puddle over there. So I'll give the thing a wire brush and a wipe down with a wet rag, let it dry, then primer paint. That's all there is to it. All right. See all this dust coming off of here? This is what the paint's not going to stick to. Wait, well, I'm glad I got to capture this in the daylight like this so you guys can see it. That is correct, you can't just paint right over the acid. You've got to clean it first. Acid is not completely... Um, labor and free, you know, I mean, you have to work for it. It's not going to do its job all by itself. There is some elbow grease that has to go into it. That's what you're looking at here. Look at that dust tasted bad. Got a little in my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now I can use a wet rag. Wipe it down. Let it dry. We'll be back here in just a couple minutes. Wipe them down. Factory welds on this component are actually uglier than mine. <laughs> when I was in here grinding up my welds last night in the dark, I can see I took down some of the factory ones too. <laughs> Alright, 
let that dry. Way over here. Because I might paint all the way up to the all the way up to the front. All right, paint is still drying, but we're gonna try to not mess with the paint too much. It's cooling down out here, unfortunately, and uh, the sun's no longer shining directly on it because it was drying so fast on that first coat. Anyway, we gotta put this sucker in here. It's gonna go in here, just like, how did that go in, actually? Oh, I'm trying to remember, because, eh, I kind of weaseled it out of there. Get in there. There it is. Let me get that hook in place. And this has to go up on top there too. There's just no good way for me to get in here have leverage to do this. There it goes. All right. That should work. Look at that. flawless and I feel the e-brake working good very nice okay now I've got to put the heater controls back on and I believe the temperature control goes on this side and then the heater goes on this side you see they're actually labeled All right, it's always a little fight to put these things in here and I might have even said the wrong side in which they actually go on. He goes on this side apparently and the temperature goes on that side. I thought that side was the heat and this one was the temperature. So I don't know. In my mind the definition of the words is different. It needs to just be tight enough. Perfect. Same thing on the other side. Oops. Duck man, did you know you can strip out a pulp with an impact? There's supposed to be these little friction discs that go in here, like little plastic washers or something. And they're not here anymore, not surprised. It'll work fine without it. You just don't over tighten these things. There it is. Looks like I may have to bend the handle there just a little bit to get it to clear all the junk that's here. That's good. Works. All right. We are functional again. Fantastic. Rocking and rolling. All right. That is going to make this owner of this car very, very happy. The damn helicopter's got to be flying over, of course, while I'm working. Typical. <laughs> well, several people came by while I was working on this thing. And they all pretty much said the same thing. How the hell does an e-brake flange shatter on a tunnel. So it's still anybody's mystery as to uh, exactly just how the hell that happened. I like these little teak. I guess it's teak. I don't know. I think the wood stuff that dad used to make in his boats. And nobody could understand how this flange could shatter. Frankly, I can't either. <laughs> All right, let's get that seat back in here. I'm gonna hook that spring back up too. All right, inch the teeth on here. Determine which seat is driver's and passenger side because the adjustment handle. <laughs> ah, 
here it goes. Handle back. And driver's side. Oh, did it go on the first try? It sure did. <laughs> oh no, it didn't. It's off. <laughs> I might actually have to go through the back door here. That steering wheel's in my way. Hey, you know what? I forgot to put the seat belts in. That's easy enough, though. All right. I believe the buttons face the occupant. So, I think they go like this. In fact, yes. I can see that the, uh, seatbelt receiver here actually has a shape that matches the tunnel. Alright, here we go. with a ratchet just to make sure that it's tight as it's supposed to be because my impact didn't strip it <laughs> I better come back with a ratchet and make sure it's properly stripped <laughs> this one goes on make sure this flap comes out because we had problems with these things seating in there properly unless they were in all the way in fact that closed perfectly and that was an issue before and now it's not all right then the back one, which is, I believe is this one, I think it goes on here like this. Again, make sure this flap is seated the whole way out, push it in. Yeah, that closed better than they did earlier, like much better. That was an issue before, now suddenly it's not. All right, same thing on the other side. in a little too far. All right, well, this one goes on here. These appear to be brand new. You know how aftermarket fitment is. Some things are just a little goofy sometimes. Some things need tweaking. They're just not going in. There we go. And 
Yeah, they don't appear to be high enough on this side. Or maybe this top one is adjustable. You know, I bet you that's probably what it is. I bet this top needs to be stretched this way. In fact, yeah, I can feel it. It's not seated where it needs to be. Well, that's not what I was contracted for, but I will bring that to his attention. Hey, you guys want to see something really cool? It works! Just like it's supposed to! Oh my god! May wonders never cease! Look at that! An area I've never cut into before on any Volkswagen, and uh... Yeah, anybody that came by that visited and saw this had no understanding as to how an e-brake flange would shatter both the flange and the tunnel. I mean, just completely obliterated it. In fact, let me go show you the bits here in daylight before it gets dark. All right, as I started to cut around this thing, it literally just fell out. Uh, broke into two major components, which are these. And you can see how badly twisted up they are. And you can see the rust in the cracks, which means I didn't cut it that way. This is actually the way it was. Now, the area around here, when I started scratching off some of the paint, there was a lot of brazing work that was done in there. So somebody has also, at some point, cut apart this tunnel. In addition, the little Paul gear that's here didn't have a long enough dick and it did not engage properly with the tunnel. Now, somebody may have changed this out at some point. Maybe they broke the e-brake handle, put it in, it wasn't working right. Then they started doinking with it and I don't know. Just whatever happened here, complete catastrophe. These are the reinforcement pieces that go under here. They're not even welded to this anymore because they're so fatigued that they broke. These are the reinforcement pieces that they went all the way around. Went something like this. And it kind of fits everything together. I don't remember where this piece went. It might have been like there. This is not from here. I mean, this was in the middle somewhere. Like that on the inside. Just what a disaster. Just what a disaster. But what gets me the most is a DeWalt Sawzall blade that's in here. The JB Weld and some kind of sheet metal screw. This is what was holding the majority of it together. And what I fathom that this was doing because this is the dick that the Paul gear is supposed to lock into. Um, it wasn't locking into it at all, and rather what they were trying to do was shove the shifter, or not shifter rather, push the e-brake handle into here. Rather than grabbing the dick, it was hitting here. You can see the wear mark. And this blade was used to force the e-brake sideways. So it was kind of retaining it, or you know, forcing it to, to go to one side, which is why when you would lift it up, it would get disengaged, it would move to a weird spots. It just didn't feel right. Everything about it felt wrong. So this was somebody's bullshit design right here. Too bad too, it's a proper DeWalt Sawzall blade. <laughs> it looks kind of worn. I'm gonna say they're not cheap anymore. I mean, what, it's two, three bucks a blade anymore. Thanks, Biden. <laughs> all right, well, all that is gonna go in a recycle bin. Maybe I might just keep it, put it on uh, the duck man's wall of shame. I need to do something like that actually, but yeah, that's pretty, pretty interesting here. I'll take some more photographs of that for sure. Stick it up on Instagram. <laughs> well, now that was different. I can honestly say that I have not ever dug into a tunnel on the top section like that before, aside from just cutting them into pieces to destroy them. But in this case, I'm glad I kept what I did because I was able to repair this car in such a situation that somebody should shatter the flange on the tunnel for the e-brake and just, I don't know. <laughs> Anybody that I spoke to that's ever welded or, or did a repair or even customization on the Volkswagen once again said the same thing. They have not ever seen a flange shatter and take out a chunk of the tunnel at the same time like it did. So this is, this is probably one for the record books. Although maybe as these Volkswagens are getting older, maybe we're starting to see some new problems. I mean, nobody ever expected these things to last 50 years, you know, 5 to 10 years maybe, 20 tops. But these cars are 50, 60 years old. I mean, Eleanor is pushing 70 now. It's just hard to believe these things have been around as long as they have, but yeah, that might, might be what's going on here with this thing. It's pushed a milestone in such a way that it's gonna start experiencing new problems that nobody's ever seen before. Maybe we'll start seeing some more of this, but if so, hey, I'm an expert. I can fix these now. <laughs> so anyways, you guys, thanks for watching. Link it, like it, comment, subscribe. Check out DuckShit.net for all my different social media links as well as my other YouTubes. Yes, I have more than one YouTube. Thanks everybody for subscribing to all of them and following what I do. We'll see you next time, so thanks for watching. All right, this is gonna be fun. I get to drive this thing home to Wild Bill. Okay, uh, 
It's gonna be an adventure. This is gonna be ridiculous. Watch this. Yeah, you guys are allowed to laugh. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, I already hit my knee on something. Ugh. Oh, ow. That is snug. Woo! Can that seat go back at all? Oh, we got a little bit out of it. Okay. Uh, that'll work. <laughs> is cozy. <laughs> this is a new engine, but it's a little cold, so we're gonna let it warm up just a minute. But I've never driven a Volkswagen thing before. It's nice that I have a little more shoulder room than I do inside of my Beetle, for example, but headroom's about the same, even though I have a roof chop. Beetles have that big dome, and you got a lot of headroom in there. I wouldn't mind being a little further away from the steering wheel, like four or five inches more. <laughs> Way too close. It's like in my balls. Oh, not cool. All right. I put that away, can't have that showing. <laughs> it's not exactly concealed carry if you're not concealing, if you know what I mean. <laughs> All right, here we go. It's a stock shifter for you. I forgot there's a piece of wood behind the rear wheel. Not anymore. Oh, backing up. Don't hit a pole. Don't hit a Nissan 350Z. Close fit. And we're out. Sunglasses on here. Dark man can't drive without sunglasses. There we go. And a clutch feels different than my Type 3, and it's got a stock shifter in here, so it's uh, a little different. This has a new engine in it though, but I think it's it's stock 1600. Stock carburetor. It does have the same exhaust that we put on B's car and gear, which people told me wasn't gonna fit, but you don't tell the duck man that because guess what? That's right, it fits now. Still need 
needs a little adjustment, probably on the carburetor. Feels like it might be the accelerator pumps not uh, not giving it a squirt when I step on it. See, nothing. Uh oh. Am I gonna get past this guy? Is he gonna turn red on me? He's red. All right. We'll wait. While we were waiting, I even used the e-brake. How about that? Yeah, I gotta double pump it to make it go. I'll let Bill know that the accelerator pump probably needs an adjustment. Or maybe it's got a bad diaphragm in it. Doesn't seem like it's a big deal. Traffic coming? No. Double pump. Here we go. And just like that, we're at the destination. There he is. <laughs> You want to see some? Check this out. Special delivery. Yeah, watch this. You ready? Uber driver. Oh, nice. <laughs> it works! Back in A. And no DeWalt Salzo blades. Yay. No JB rails, no weird brazing. Perfect. Ready to go. Perfect. I think so. Well, how come you didn't put the rubber boot on there? I don't have a rubber boot. There, there is one. They came here without the condom. Oh, God. You did? Yeah, okay. <laughs> I got one.
Taco Tuesday in about an hour. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I got an appetite too. Yeah, yummy, yummy. But unfortunately, Hamburger night. Unfortunately. <laughs> beer night. No, can't do either one of them. <laughs> so because of that ground attack. Uh, you're ground your tile, huh? Yeah, uric acid. I gotta, oh, I gotta get it down. So you got PMR. No. Well, alcohol. yeah, actually, but. No alcohol. More alcohol. Lots of peeing. No red meat. Red alcohol. No. <laughs> I'm not going to that pain again. As much as I like to drink margaritas frozen type. I can't do any alcohol. I thought it was just beer. Uh, drink water tonight. Oh, that's no party. And yeah. it's your night, your night tonight too, isn't it? Yes. So you're getting off cheap by getting water. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. I'm getting fish tacos. So. Oh. Well, I'll see you in about an hour and watch you eat fish. 10-4. See you, dude. Thank you. Good Later. job, by the way. Well, I appreciate I know, it. I know Scott's going to yeah. be really happy with it. I think so. Yeah. I'm happy with it. Yeah. I would drive the piss out of it, so. Mm -hmm. It is. Yep. And sign it up. Oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh.